all, this is Charlie Hogwood with uh, ReadyGoPrep.com and Survival Dispatch. We're taking a field trip today and we're actually coming out to talk about home defense and perimeter defense for your home. A lot of people have questions on how can we fortify our home, how can we be more prepared for intruders in our neighborhood. So what we've done today is we've come out to a home to look out the windows and get a first person's pr perspective on what is, what is a blind spot, what are fields of observation, um, what is going to get in the way of us seeing what's going on and we're going to look at how to defend our home and then we're going to go outside and we're going to see what it looks like to if we were intruders trying to come into a home so why is this important well we always talk about these big bad events of uh, hordes of people coming in to take our stuff but it's also a daily criminal type of thing if you come home from Christmas shopping and you got arms full of bags are there people that could be hiding behind bushes how is your landscaping set up for your home so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna look at some of the things that are outside from the inside perspective then we're gonna go outside look at it from the intruder perspective and the special treat today we're gonna to drive a drone up into the air and then we're going to see what does it look like from the top down. And I think what we're going to find is there are going to be incredibly different views from inside, from outside, and from the aerial perspective. And if you can bring all this stuff together at your own location, then you're going to be able to build your security plan that much better for your house. All right, so here's what we want to do. If we can pan over and look outside, every house is going to have these windows. And everything that is beyond that window, we're going to call our field of view. And we're going to, just as if we went to a rifle range, we're going to establish uh, range fans, sectors of view. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our hands like this and we're going to create this wedge pie shape out of every window or doorway of the home. And as we look outside, everything that we can see is something that we need to either be able to protect or defend or prevent somebody else from using for cover or blind spots or dead spaces to work against us. So as we look outside, we want to look at the near threats first. So if we look outside, we look immediately down. What do we see out here? In this particular case, on this window, all we see is grass. And we see that there's a roadway right here and a gate to the community. We know that anybody that comes in could theoretically get all the way up against our house and we might not even know about it. So we could do some tactical landscaping, which we're going to discuss a little bit later on. I'm going to drop some images into the video so you'll see what we're talking about there. Now as we look a little bit further out, because near threats first, distant threats next, we'll start to see we have a, an electrical transformer box, that's that big green box out here. We've got some electrical panels that are operating the gate uh, mechanisms out here. And we've got some uh, hedges and shrubs. And over here on the right, we see that we got some privacy fence. There's all kinds of places for somebody to hide as they work their way towards our house. So as we look further out, we've got some open area for some asphalt. We see the gate, we've got some trees, and we've got some open field. And off in the distance, there's a wood line outside the gate. And then we've got some structures across the street and down the street over here. All of those are gonna work into our defensive plan. Now, that doesn't mean that we're gonna be the people on the end of the street wearing a vest and always looking out of our window, but we do need to be able to protect our property and be aware of what's going on outside. So. So if you look back out here and, and look at, say, outside the gate, you'll see that you can't see across the field very well. And the field out there, all the way on the far edge of that field, on that wood line, is a great place for an observation for a scout that might set up. All attacks on structures or individuals are generally set up in such a way that they've already cased the area. They've already done their pre-attack planning. And that starts with surveillance. So we're doing counter surveillance. So we need to know what's going on out there so that we can make sure that we're protecting against that. So somebody might be able to stand out there with binoculars and see all the way into this room. We're in a dining room space right now. What can we do to prevent that surveillance? Well, we can keep our blinds all the way down so that people cannot see in. But let's start thinking about the lighting that's going on. People on the outside in a bright area trying to see inside might not get very much detail, might not be able to see anything. But if this is nighttime and we've got the overhead lights on and it's dark outside, anybody walking their animals or pets coming up and down the street are going to be able to see inside and see everything that's going on in here. So we want to start thinking about that light balance that's going on. So let's prevent people from being able to mentally map out what the inside of, inside of our house looks like. So that's a good start. So let's stop there. And now what we'll do is we'll go outside and we'll look from the outside in. 
All right, so here what we are is we've moved outside. From the first window that we looked out of, we have a gate to the community right here. We're on the middle of the road, and we're looking at that window right there where the blinds are pulled up. That's the one that we looked out of, and we saw all these other items outside that we call blind spots. And those are areas that we can't see behind. If we were intruders from here, we could come in this gate, stop, and hide right down behind these bushes over here, and then we could surveil the home even closer. We want to prevent that as a homeowner. As you'll notice, we got hedges, we got the uh, transformer box right over here, and then that's the window we were looking at. So if we come forward just a little bit, you'll see that there's no defensive landscaping underneath that window over there. So theoretically, we could get right up in the middle of the night and then poke, poke our face into that window and see something that's going on. So we want to prevent that as a homeowner. Look at all these other windows that we have alongside the house here. Can you pick out a number of places where somebody might hide and wait for you to drive up and be distracted as you try to get into your home? We want to remove those kind of defensive positions for them. All right, what we've done is we've moved over to another window on the home. We're on the edge of a living room right now. And if you'll look over my shoulder, you'll see the backyard. Now we're in a small community here, so you'll see that the lots are not very large. Outside this lot, we've got a wooden privacy fence. So start asking yourself, do I have something like that out in the back of the property where somebody could move up against it and I wouldn't have any advance notice that they were there? So as you look over the edge, you'll also see that there's a hedge down here with a bit of a blind spot, maybe a wall or a downhill edge on there. That's protecting the view from somebody else getting close to the property. How are we going to protect that? Well, when we get outside, we're going to start talking about what technically is an area denial device things that are going to prevent people from taking a comfortable position out of your view so that they can observe you. So look outside, we see trees. Notice that there's also a climate issue here. What, what season are we in? Right now, this particular season, we're at the end of summer, so all the trees are still fully leaved and in bloom. But that is also prevent, preventing us from seeing further out onto the property. So now, that's going to mask anybody that's beyond there, but it's also preventing our observation. So in the winter time, if all these leaves fall, that's going to allow somebody to be further out and observe us. And it's also going to allow us that standoff capability to see further out in defense. Again, based on the type of cur curtains that you have on and the window coverings on the windows, are somebody going to be able to see inside the windows and see and make a mental map all the way through the house? might be if you've got all the lights on. Sometimes people have dinner and they leave all the curtains open to see what's going on, light up the house at night and everybody walking by can see what's going on in here. We don't want that all the time. So make a little mental map, if you will, of all the objects and trees and fences that are out in the property because we're going to go outside and we're going to see what it looks like from there. You're going to get an entirely different perspective. All right, so we've moved a little bit further outside of the gate of the community. So what we'll do is I'll direct your attention over here. You see the gates and the street that comes up in this small community. If we pan to the left, the house that we were in is right there on the corner as we enter the community. We've got some magnolia trees, we've got some pecan trees, and we got that privacy fence that comes around the back side of the house. So when we were looking out the bay window out of the living room, we noticed that our field of view was limited to seeing that. Well, this is what the intruder will see from the outside and the public side of the street. Notice here in this time of year, there's a bunch of uh, obscurity from all the vegetation. Keep in mind that in the winter time when the leaves come off all these trees, people driving down the main road will have a direct view all the way up inside the house, especially if we have the lights on inside and we have the curtains open. Okay, so here we are. We've moved a little bit closer to the house and you'll notice that this shadow box privacy fence is keeping the privacy of the homeowner, but it's also giving the privacy to the intruder. And if you'll notice right down through here, that's a bit of what we might call a game trail or a little bit of a transient pathway for people to move along undetected behind the fences and behind all the hedges. So anybody coming from the open community can work their way up through here relatively unseen. So one, a point that I wanted to note here, this is the beginning of the community. What good is the gate if it's always gonna be open? So if you're looking for some kind of security from your gate and the gate is always open, that's gonna be a breach in your security right there. But also notice that the pedestrian gates here being unlocked, even if the gates are closed for vehicle traffic, are gonna allow an opportunity for somebody to come into your neighborhood. Maybe you wanna to talk to your community and say, how can we better up our security by securing these gates? Okay, so what we've done is we've moved back up against the home again. And this is the initial wall that you saw outside. 
But what I want to do is I want to bring your attention to this right here. This is your electric meter, and on this house, this is the main circuit breaker. If you'll see right here, what I can do when I open this little lid, that's the main amp breaker that shuts down all the power to the house. I'm a bad guy. If I come up and flip that off, especially at night on a warm night, what do you think is going to happen? Power's going to go off. It's going to get hot in the house. All I got to do is hide by the fence right now and wait for you to open up a window. If you open up a window, you've just now allowed me an entry to the home. So, how can we take care of this? Well, you can put a padlock on here, but it's not really going to be all that secure. So you're really going to have to plan for that kind of thing. Think mentally, if my power goes off, why did it go off? If I look outside my window before I open it, are the other lights on in the neighborhood or are they not? If they're on and mine's off, maybe I want to be a, bit, a little bit more aware that something else might be going on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come back and we're going to go up to the house, we'll grab a drone, we're going to raise that up in the sky, and now we're going to take an overall field of view perspective from the bird's eye view. Okay, so what we've done here is we've taken the drone up in the air and we're looking at this property from an aerial perspective. And we're looking at the areas that we walked on the ground. As you notice now, we approach the rear of the home. You might recognize the gate to the community and the field behind the trees, the magnolias and pecans that we talked about. Notice that as we fly over, the perspectives are a little bit different. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to stop the video right here and I want to see what the back of the yard looks like without, uh, without standing in it. Notice in the video here as we're looking down at the property, we see the, the, basically the property drops off in a relief. And there's rows of hedges that come down a set of steps there. So in the set of steps, uh, that is going to be a channeling area. One of the benefits to setting up a defensive plan on a property is to be able to channel people into the areas of observation that you want them in, not that they feel like they want to be in. We're going to move this whole organization in such a way that it's going to benefit us, the defender, and not the trespasser. So if you've got an uncomfortable area with the hedges coming down off that hill, you can put some area denial devices in there and force them to use those steps. Because the steps coming up to the back of the property back door uh, are going to be right in your line of observation, then you can do to the trespasser what you wish to do with them. So let's continue on around the property here. Let the video move forward a little bit. And you'll see now looking back over how much concealment there is on that field behind the house. In the wintertime, those leaves are going to be all gone, so there'll be a lot more view on both sides. That can work for and against us. As we come back up, you'll see that there's uh, fences coming off the side of the house. Those should be addressed as well. There's going to be some gates there. Do we need to secure those gates? Do we need to observe those gates? So now we're looking at the side of the house and see how close the house is to the gate to the community and the uh, street nearby. So what can we do to eliminate blind spots and dead spaces outside of there? And how can we protect those? So part of protecting those property edges like that is to put in the area denial devices. Any, and that is going to be anything that might be a caltrop. It could be broken glass. It could be uh, spiky plants, what we call tactical landscaping or defensive landscaping. And that's going to be any plants or anything that's going to prevent you from wanting to run up and lay down there and hide. If you're not able to hide where you want to be as a trespasser, you're going to be out into the channeling areas where we want you to be as the home defender. And that's going to be a bad position for the trespasser. <laughs>